Share uh, audience, this is Share Core, and we are here today to talk about PR scams. Know what you want and never give up. Don't try to pour from an empty cup. Champagne marketing on a beer budget. It's business advice from Paige the Puppet. We talked in a Reddit uh, post about, you know, she, she had been approached by somebody. And you could tell us the story of who you got approached by and why you thought it might be a good idea. And then I'll dive into why uh, I came in there and said, no, don't do it, lady. Okay. And so we'll get into that. So first of all, Shakur, can you uh, introduce yourself and uh, we'll dive in. Okay, hi, I'm Cher, Cher Core. I live in Boston and I do a lot of stuff. I've been teaching uh, aromatherapy classes for 20 years, but that got cut down with COVID. So, oy, long story, but I started getting really artsy craftsy during COVID. And also before that, I had changed careers to childcare in which I was just doing sort of daycare at a gym for toddlers and I was loving it not making I mean making minimum wage but getting to know like I'd watch six kids at a time and I was really good at it so unfortunately the gym closed due to COVID they couldn't pay their rent yada yada so I'm like okay um I started looking online for childcare jobs and there was a lot of jobs for after school teachers. And I just needed to get um, some certificates and some of them required you already have them, but some would let you get them before the job started. So right away, the first day I started, I got like two interviews right away. And literally one of those gave me the offer and I accepted it pretty quickly. So now I'm like really excited. So I've been working there since September, since school started with like six year olds and we do a lot of arts and crafts. And that's one of the reasons I was hired. I'm like, I love kids, I love arts and crafts. Um, you know, I'll do good activities with them. And that has been happening. So. Well, I only work during the school year, so I have vacations off, I have weekends off, I'll have the summer off. So I want to expand my business to do some creative babysitting for kids. Like you, like we'll do nature, creative stuff, cultural stuff for like, so it's an activity, not just a babysitting service where we sit and watch a kid's movie and I make sure they're safe. It's like uh, enhancement to them. So there's a more premium price on it. That is awesome. And mama really relates because she of course is an EA presently in a school and it works with six year olds every single day. Now we aren't quite as creative uh, as you are, oh, but we yes, kind of are, are, sort of, in a way, uh, but, but different, right? It's not after school care, but same challenges. Summer's mm -hmm. off, uh, having weekends, and all sorts of time uh, that is uh, available uh, mm -hmm. to provide a service in another way uh, yeah. to children. So we totally relate to that. And uh, we totally have some ideas on how you can reach those markets, but we'll get to those after we dive into the PR scam that you yeah. almost fell into. So in looking for some ways to get to that target market, you're thinking, oh, maybe I should go on a podcast. And yeah. yes, and, that's and they actually contacted me for the aromatherapy part of it. And the reason why I fell for it is because I've gotten a lot of legitimate press. I've been on two local TV shows, Boston Globe, Boston Magazine, like, I mean, dozens of free press over the years just by networking and volunteering and yada, yada. So I was like, oh, they just found me and they thought it'd be a good story. 
All right, so then I talked to my dad, who's like 85 and like negative about everything. And he's like, oh, it's probably a scam. And I'm like, dad, you know, I'm an interesting person. Give me a break, right? Well, then I Googled and it turned out to be a scam. And then I sent you the hypnotherapist guy who had that nice review of how it's a scam. They lure you in, then they want you to pay $1,000 for saying you're great, yada, yada. And he said, well, use them for the five minute interview. And that's where you came in with the great advice and saying, this is why that's not such great advice. And why don't you tell me what advice you gave me? Because it was good and why I declined the thing. Right. And so one of the reasons is that you can get that free. You've already had uh, free coverage over the years. You put that into a media page and show off that you've been in those things. And it can lead to more coverage. When you've gotten coverage, it's easier to get coverage because other people and journalists see that, hey, she is a good interview. She's done this before. Maybe she has new thoughts on this particular topic and so on and so forth. When you've gotten coverage, it's easy to already get legitimate coverage. You don't have to pay for it. I'm going to have a question about that. Absolutely. And I will answer it as soon as I finish the first one. Okay. okay. I do have have a little bit more that goes with that. The second reason it's not a good idea is because even though your end consumer might not be aware that, oh, that's a pay for play type uh, outlet, the real journalists do know. The real yeah. journalists do know that that is a pay for play outlet. So then they're going to know that you're willing to pay for play. And uh, that can lead to uh, certain conflicts within their journalistic integrity mm. that they might not be able to pick you up uh, as a legitimate, revo- uh, legitimate resource because you have paid for play. Now, there are ways that pay for play can work for you. But think about this. If they are using this free opportunity to get you to pay thousands of dollars for something you can get for free, if if you play it wisely, that you can get for free, if they're willing to charge thousands of dollars for that, then they might use your success Later on, like if you get successful, like say it works in everything, what you do, uh, then they will use you as an example mm. of what they can do. And, and it's not because and it's going to be your, your hard reputation work. along the way. Yeah. Right. And it's going to be your hard work that gets you there. Because let me tell you, even getting into substantial media, like you could be on Oprah, but if you don't use it wisely, if you don't, Uh, represent yourself nicely is not going to lead to an increase in business. Mm -hmm. So you have to do it wisely, not just how to scout it. Because you can get accidental coverage. Uh, You have experienced some accidental coverage over the years. You didn't go out and seek it. It came to you because you're being lovely and doing your thing. You were Mm -hmm. newsworthy on your own. Yeah. And you didn't seek it out. Yeah. But yes, it's possible that if you had been prepared for that, then you could have turned it into sales. But you probably weren't prepared uh, mm. with the website and information that people who might have been looking for you after your appearance in whatever mm. media, and they were looking for you, and what did they find? So yeah. that's the next step. That, that's kind of where we'll go in the next step. But you had a question in this yeah. PR realm about it. So let's get into that question. Oh, okay. So there are journalists who have legitimately wrote about my aromatherapy. And um, should I reach out to them and say, I'm offering a new creative service? Do you okay. think this so story here, is interesting? Here is my take on that. If it applies to your new target market as well, as long as there is a crossover, 
because if it's not a crossover, they might not be interested. So we got to look at those articles in particular, look at who wrote them, what they specialize in. So if they are in general small businesses in Boston, then yes, that's a crossover. Yeah, it's like community stuff. If they were more interested in the aromatherapy side of things, then maybe creative things for kids is not their forte and not what they cover and not the crossover of audience. Yeah. Does that make I, sense? Yeah. I <laughs> think these particular guys were looking for stories that were local, that were interesting. So, I mean, oh, that's it a crossover. anything. Yeah. yeah. If it's local, there's a crossover and they were covering you because you were interesting, then you are still interesting as a creative children's. Um, and I would suggest you start thinking in terms of. you want and never give up. Don't try to pour from an empty cup. Champagne marketing on a beer budget. It's business advice from Paris.